Today is a great day because it is the day when we finally get rid of those annoying sea roots forever! Yeah! Unless they decide to remake Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Then if they decide to do so and I'm forced to LP it, God help us. And a Whiskash? Well, that's not a very good match. I'll go, I have anything better? Oh. I don't have any grass attacks, so I guess I'm gonna send out my Lottic to surf it in order to get some experience, I guess, and amnesia. Here's something I never understood, speaking of amnesia. Why does amnesia boost special defense? Or, in the case of Generation 1, both special stats, since there, were, there was only one back then. Amnesia usually is a negative thing, so why does it boost your own stats, especially special defense. If anything, having amnesia and forgetting about something should drop your special defense, not boost it. That's something I never really understood. Then again, there are far weirder things than that in the Pokemon world. Like how the heck can a Diglett or a Dugtrio scratch or a slash? And I'm not bringing Sucker Punch into this because it was a mistranslation. It was originally called Ambush in Japanese. And while Sucker Punch pretty much captures the spirit of the effect, in that, well, you wanna attack? Well, I'm gonna attack first. So Sucker Punch makes sense from that perspective, but not. Ah! Shut up! I'm tired of those phone calls. I thought I'd be rid of them after Crystal, but oh, they brought them back with a vengeance, I guess. Uh, what am I saying again? I'm having amnesia! That, that means I guess my special defense is now higher, for whatever reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sucker Punch, and how it's been given to a lot of Pokémon that don't even have hands. But yeah, as I said, it was called Ambush, and literally anything can lay an ambush if it's quick enough, I guess. So, yeah, so, so that's why everything in their mother gets Sucker Punch, but not Hitmonchan. Anyway, before I forget, just a word regarding the current situation with the flag bombings. Proton John and I have been targeted, in quotes, by an impersonator, a fake, an imposter, a doppelganger. So, if you're really worrying about me, don't. That guy is no threat at all. However, Proton John has been targeted by another account. Is that one real? I don't know, but I wouldn't take any chances. But the other... It's just plain bullshit, so don't worry about me, don't spam all over my channel that I'm next, because until further notice, I am still okay. But just in the event that something does happen to me, I prepared a little something so that you won't go without any word of me if you don't go to the TS3 forums. I've prepared a blog just in case the worst happens. It's at slowflake.wordpress.com I'm going to put the link in the movie description on, and I suggest that you bookmark it just in case. Now, now that I've beaten this guy, there's only one more trip to go through these currents and after that, I am done with the sea roads! Finally! Only a few minutes left! So, anyway, what I'm going to do for this part is that I'm going to go up, up, and up again, because that's the part that I haven't visited yet, and the pa it's the path that I ended up on halfway through after messing up that one surfing segment, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, we're almost done, and we're in part 123. I'm going to be heading to the seafloor cavern after this, something I should have done all the way back in part 97, back when I beat Maxi and Tabitha, and also obtained the Dive HM from Steven. So basically, what this means is that I wasted over four hours doing nothing but optional side quests and other stuff like that. Four hours! Archie must be bored out of his mind just watching Kyogre. You know, is he here yet? Is he here yet? And for some reason he doesn't feel like awakening Kyogre before I arrive because that would be what a smart villain would do. But no, he has to wait four hours 
for me to come. Well, that may be more than four hours, because he actually jacked the submarine before I went to the aqua hideout and then went to Moss Deep, cleared the gym, so he took the submarine like five hours ago. And he left from the hideout in part something like 91. So yeah, he, le he left the, hide the hideout over five hours ago and still Kyogre isn't awakened. Worst villain ever. But okay, what I'm gonna do once this route is over, I'm gonna head back to Moss Deep change those shards I got for elemental stones, sell items like pearls and and uh, star pieces and stuff. I'm going to do it off screen because it may take a while. If it took like a minute I would I wouldn't bother to stop and then restart the recording. But it's probably going to take a few minutes, so I'm not going to bother you with all the details. All you need to know is that I'm going to end up with a few more elemental stones that I won't need, and also some money that I might need later on, but not necessarily sure since I can just farm Gabby and Ty if I ever need any money. And I think, yep, yeah, I think this is the girl that I fought after fucking up, so... We're done with the sea route! Woohoo! I'll be back in a moment! And we're done with our shopping here, so let's head after over four hours of nothingness to the seafloor cavern. And I'm going to head down in underwater so that I'm going to avoid random battles without using the repels. And yes, I don't really care much for the whatever little experience I lose that way, especially if I, if I encounter nothing but level 9 or 11 or 15 tentacles and wing dolls it can happen. So I'm just heading straight for the seafloor cavern, especially since, well, the entrance is underwater anyway. Now the way this place works is that there are two paths. There's the long, easy route and the short, more difficult route. And, oh, we got the submarine that the Aquas Jack here. And, yes, there are two routes, and, of course, we're going to go through the long, easy routes, because that's where the trainers are. And the reason why the shorter route is harder is because, well, you're going to see at some point in the next video after... Actually, you're not going to see it, because we're going through the other route, but it's going to be easier to explain if I show it to you when we get to the room that's similar on the long and easy route. Now the way this place works is that on both routes there's a passage that leads back to the entrance, which is of course bad. The thing is that on the long route the passage is earlier on and easier to avoid, whereas on the short route you might just end up in that passage before you know it. And I'm going to show you why probably in the next video because we're not going to reach that room quite yet. We still have a ways to go. And there you can see the, the passage there at the top of the screen. This is the one that leads to the short room. Upstairs there's another grunt here and past that grunt it's the long easy route. So that's basically the rundown on how this dungeon works. Of course, we'll be fighting all the grunts, getting all the items. Are there any items, though? I, I actually doubt it. I think there are only grunts. So, yeah, th this battle is about to end, and I am uh, going to stop recording here for now. Don't worry, I'm going to make another video right away as soon as it's done saving, because I want to show you... The, the tricks and traps of the seafloor cavern, but that's going to be in the next video.